coming up on the Branding Deep Dive podcast. And now you're the author of that. You know, literally, the, 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 your area of expertise, you've got a book published under. Uh, there mm-hmm. isn't a better way of getting on the stage. There isn't a better way of being interviewed. There's a better way of getting the next job, director position, C-level exec, than writing the book to begin with. This is Ahmed Chima, and welcome to the Branding Deep Dive podcast. If you're new here, this is a podcast where we have in-depth discussions with founders, marketers, and brand strategists about how to build a brand that people love. Today, we're talking to Scott Terman. He's the founder and CEO of BrightWrite Publishing, an American company that offers writing and publishing services for founders, CEOs, celebrities, sports figures, politicians, and other professionals. Scott has co-written two books. The first is Stop Getting f by Technical Recruiters, A Nerd's Guide to Negotiating Salary and Benefits. And the second is How to Build Your Brand with a Book, Establishing Yourself as a Published Expert. Scott is a technologist, entrepreneur, and author. Prior to founding BrightWay Publishing, he wrote code and cryptographic systems for organizations like NASA, US Department of Defense, Disney, and other Fortune 500s. In this episode, we dive deep into how writing a book can give your personal brand a huge lift, what to write about, how to leverage your book to get the opportunities you want, and much, much more. If people are always telling you that you need to write a book, this episode is a must listen. Now, here's Scott. Uh, for the audience that may not be familiar with who you are and the work you do, can you give them a brief introduction? So uh, my company, Brightway Publishing, uh, we write, well, we're kind of book partners for CEOs, founders, um, inventors, kind of the whole gamut of people just kind of building their personal brand. And we kind of have a process to kind of pull that book out of people's heads or they just muse and talk. We have a team of writers that, 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 that actually makes the execution happen, book cover, ex- you know, in Walmart, in Target, Books a Million, uh, and, and Amazon. If I had a book and I, I feel like I'm kind of close to ready to get to that publishing piece, like how do I kind of engage your team and how does that process look like? We have a couple of different methods, right? So if you already have a manuscript that you're mostly done with, you know, we'll have our team, will go, our editors will kind of go through, do the assessment and say, you know, this is like 80% done. You probably need a chapter here, another story there, and kind of, you know, kind of show you where the, Kind of the, the, the rise and fall of all stories kind of go. Um, and then uh, through, a, through a series of interviews, they would kind of pull those missing chapters and missing pieces out. Now, if you're starting from scratch, uh, you know, we'll work out this thesis, the, you know, the, the, the lens and the, and the audience you're trying to go for, you know, what your objectives are, what the book's objectives are, because sometimes they're not the same objectives. The book may be there to, you know, help teach people how to do this, that, and the other. Um, that's the book's objective. Your objective would be more business based on, you know, the, the showing your expertise in the book. Scott, I know you're someone that, uh, you know, you're not, you weren't necessarily in the publishing background, uh, you know, your, your whole career. If you could talk a little bit about um, your foray into publishing and how you got into this and uh, what you were doing before. So, uh, so I started my career 25 years ago uh, in a multitude of places at the height I was at. NASA uh, for a couple of years as a software engineer, um, and then you know which was amazing. I, I was named after Scott Carpenter, who was the second American in space. My father was an engineer on, uh, on Project Redstone slash Mercury, so NASA was kind of in my blood, you know, since I was uh, you know all my science projects in middle school and after school were rocket this, rocket that, parachute this, parachute that, um, and then uh, and then I, I moved to Disney. And I just started to realize that there was just, you know, there was a ton of money that can be made you know, with these kind of specialized skill sets, um, you know, kind of moving from from uh, Fortune 5 to Fortune 5 in a consulting capacity. Ten years ago, I uh, started my consulting company at our height. I think we were about 30 consultants. Um, and it was just, you know, so when you see Bright Ray, I own the trademark. So all things Bright Ray is probably, I probably own, I probably own the company or whatever. Um, so Bright Ray Consulting, Bright Ray Publishing, et cetera. Um, and then about two years ago, uh, I've been trying to publish, well, write and publish uh, a book for, uh, basically it's a, like a nerd's guide to negotiating salary because we're just not very good at it for the most part. Um, and I just kept seeing kind of technical recruiters just take advantage of, you know, these people who were clearly worth 150 an hour, but getting in 90, 80, 70, 60, because they didn't know how to negotiate. Um, I can't write my way out of a paper bag. Um, so I, um, I found kind of a writing partner, uh, Zoe Rose. And then it was kind of during COVID, we, we kind of had this, uh, this this Zoom writing process. We kind of worked out the process where 
you know, the, the, we all, the kind of the beginnings of what we have today. Uh, we publish it, sold a thousand copies, you know, the first month. Uh, and then I had um, a guy named Craig Sicanti, uh contacted me. He's a guy who's taken a couple of companies public, professor at a Rice University. Would you help me write my book? And then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. And it just kept going on from there. And, you know, now we're up to nine employees as it will probably be 12, I guess, in the next two or three weeks. Um, and uh, we've just been growing. And it's been my, my, my job now is basically just talking to badass people. CEOs, founders, <laughs> watch stars, senators, astronauts. Uh, that's really my job now. Um, so I'm kind of the, the, the initial call, right? And I kind of pass it on to the sales crew and they kind of take it from there. But so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of living the dream right now. That's awesome. Scott, let me ask you this. Um, you know, you mentioned you sold a thousand copies in your first month. It, I'm assuming that's not something that's normal when you write a book. Uh, when it, when it comes to actually writing a book and distribution and make, you know, pushing it, uh, are there any best practices or uh, strategies you can share without, I mean, uh, I'm sure you it probably share that with your clients. You right. But it depends. So if, if let's say that you have zero following, I think I had 14 or 15,000 people following me on, on LinkedIn. I had I, I, been actual, actual like-minded nerdy individuals. You know, I, I had already had kind of a base following. So when I published, it was easy to go sell that many books. Um, because of kind of who they, the, the relationships I had, the companies I'd been to, I could go leverage this person, that person, you know, they could help me push it out more. And no, that's not, that's not average. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're going into this to, to sell more, to sell a ton of books, then you should do something else. This is not what that's for. This is, this is, uh, this is for, uh, you know, if you have a consulting company and you're, you want to, you want to, you know, you FedEx the book out to them basically before you do the sales call, you're going to close your sales call as an example, or you're trying to build your brand kind of as the, the foundation to your expertise, your brand. This is how it's done. That's what it's used for. It's a vector. It's a vector into uh, these podcasts, right? It's a vector into a TV shows. It's a vector into, uh, I have a story uh, a couple of months ago, somehow I wound up on like national Turkish television, right? <laughs> um, and it was all because I written the book. It was all because it was all, a, it was all kind of the beginning of this whole kind of brand. And that was one of those situations. If you go look it up from, to, um, in my defense, okay. <laughs> when you look it up, uh, that was one of those, like, you know, I was like, Oh yeah, I'd love to interview. Let's do this. And you know, I get on, I get on the call. It's like, and I hear this kind of a uh, very strong kind of Turkish uh, English accent. I think it's okay. Lower left. Like, okay, you're live in three, two, <laughs> one, boom. And then, and now I'm really, I'm like, I'm like, there's a huge monitor in front of me. And all the, you know, there's, I can see, you know, the guy, the interviewer and it was, it's bonkers. Um, so, so yeah, you can kind of, you know, kind of shoehorn yourself into it. So many, many different places, but ultimately it's a, it's an example of your expertise. You know, it's an example of how you build your brand. Someone that doesn't have a following, uh, would you recommend trying to focus on building that following first or, uh, is the book something that can help you, uh, you know, establish that following? Like I, what, what comes first is what I would ask. Right, just kidding, man. So the, 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 I'd say 60 or 70% of the people that we, that we write or help write and publish for, you know, they, they are, they are, they, they typically, a lot of them are already kind of wealthy, famous individuals who are basically just trying to elevate, you know, beyond, above and beyond their bubble. Now, if you're starting from scratch, uh, you do know enough people. You just don't know it. If you were to think really hard, everybody knows between 10 and 100 people that they can make a list on Google Sheets, contact them individually, get their email, and then only ask them, hey, I'm getting ready to publish a book. I need your support. What I mean by that is, would you mind buying it and then commenting on it? Because that's, that's a, you know, and, and kind of star rating it on Amazon is that's kind of the basis of, of the algorithm on Amazon. You've got about seven days, you know, to sell uh, enough books to kind of make it in those top you know, echelons where Amazon starts pump, pumping your book for you and they can kind of spiral into a good thing. Uh, you know, we set up a, we, we kind of help every, and that's the thing. If you start from scratch, you know, we actually help you get that part done. We'll actually go brainstorm and go figure out who, you know, go create the newsletter for you. And then, Hey, I'm publishing in one month, three weeks, one week, one day, tomorrow, boom. And then you kind of have the people you, the small people you do know, pump it everywhere and then you can kind of slowly grow your, grow your brand that way. You know, ultimately if you sell 50 to hundred books, awesome. You're, you're probably number one in a couple of different categories on Amazon. You can make hay with that on Twitter, make hay with that on LinkedIn, but ultimately it's, it's, you're now a published author with, with the sum total of your expertise that you can now go kind of lever into, uh, 
the consulting gigs or whatever it's that you're trying to accomplish with. It sounds like you're saying that you know the majority of the money that you make is not actually from the book. Uh, I, I know you mentioned one of the routes is consulting, the other route is uh, uh, like you know just speaking gigs and stuff like that. What are what are kind of some of the most common ways you see authors that how do they end up using the authority uh, and influence that comes with having uh, you know a, a, being a published author? Yeah, it's, it's really a matter of, uh, it's, it, it is influence, right? It is when someone goes to, for instance, if you look me up, Scott Terman, if you get a chance, look me up, Scott Terman on Google, right? And then you'll see that Google kind of separates me out with a knowledge panel. I really, it's almost like uh, type in Bill Gates, he has exactly the same knowledge panel. I'm not equating myself to Bill Gates, but I'm just saying Google presents us in a similar way. Um, so uh, and it's, it's my opinion that when Google does that and you own those top 50 spots, You've already won the brand game, meaning that if someone has heard of what who you are, it's going to go look at who you what you do, and Google presents you that way, and it's it's in a way that you can control picture, description, LinkedIn, Facebook, all those things kind of agree. You've won. Um, they're gonna, I mean, they're they're literally gonna see that and go, oh my god. So Google, that's interesting. How they, you know, you know, kind of the appeal to authority, right? With the the fallacy of but you're appealing to Google's authority that you know that 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 this person has this expertise. Look, Google shows them this way as an example. Um, and that, that's, the, that's one of the greatest, that, that's one of the biggest things that happens because that almost immediately happens if you do it correctly when you publish a book. That almost immediately happens that you're an author, Google presents you such a way. You know, you've actually got to, I mean, sometimes if you've got a very common name, um, you know, you're going to have to kind of work at it. But most of the time, you know, you or I have fairly unique names. We can, we can, we can make that happen pretty quickly. So you're saying once you publish a book and Google recognizes that this book is from you, it gives yep. you that knowledge panel piece. And so when people are searching, right. even if they think you're just a normal person, then they're going to start associating you with, oh, this person, like, he must be legit because Google's given him a special panel. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about that. But, yeah, um, it's, uh, and then I mean, the other way to get it is to go get a Wikipedia page. Right. But it's a chicken before the egg. Right. So Wikipedia isn't going to give you a page or the, uh, until you've been in like three to five primary sources where the article is primarily about you, like the Wall Street Journal Inc. magazine. And then and then uh, Wikipedia is like, OK, well, we'll, we'll, we'll allow Scott Terman's Wikipedia page to pop up. Uh, that's a hard road to row. You're already famous at that point. This is a, this is a little easier, kind of a backdoor way of doing it. Um, like if you also, if you, if you type in, you know, Scott Terman and go to Google news, you'll see that I'm in Inc. I'm in wall street journal. I'm in Forbes. I'm in a bunch of different places that all happened because I was able, I, cause I was leveraging my book to do that. I was leveraging the book to get in there, to go get the quotes, to go get the interviews. Um, before I had published, no one would take me seriously. I mean, I had, I had a pretty good career. I'd probably, I've accomplished a couple things here, but no one, no, no, no reporter would ever take me seriously until they saw that I was an author. I wouldn't even get the interview. And it would go from, you know, 10 requests. I would put in, you know, I would respond to 10 different requests. And I would get maybe one person, one reporter going, who are you? And then now I just respond back. And if I have 10 requests, I'll, I'll respond back and get five or six quotes from five or six different places. Because I literally put Google.com question mark Scott plus Terman showing them my knowledge panel. And that typically, that you know, okay, well, you leave the very minimum it's a it's a dispensable position to my boss that he's well known enough in this industry that Google presents him this way. It's this really <laughs> weird circle of firing squad, where everything kind of pointing to each other. You know, I had no idea about knowledge panels. Uh, I'm learning about this for the first time. So there's a guy named Jason Bernard. Jason Bernard is uh, the CEO of Google. Uh, said that Jason Bernard is the authority, and he doesn't work for Google for knowledge panels. <laughs> um, so uh, five months ago, we helped him write and publish his book. Uh, it's called Brand Serps uh, for business. I, I think I have to I mean, make sure, but it's just look up Jason Bernard, the Brand Serp guy, um, and he's kind of his book will completely break down how it's how it's done if you want to kind of start from scratch. One thing I wanted to ask you about Bright Ray is, you know, I'm I'm sure there's I don't know much about the publishing industry. Um, how is Bright Ray different from kind of some of the other players that are, uh, you know, have been in the industry for a long time? Uh, it sounds like this the knowledge panel thing is probably uh, a differentiator you guys have, but is there anything else? Like how, how, how is your approach different from kind of the old school publishing method? So uh, since the printing press, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, um, what you would do is you basically, you'd write a book. Um, you would go get the, the plates etched out, right? 
And then, uh, and then you go to a printer and they would print the book and then they would bound the book and then here's your book. You know, it's, here's a, you know, 30 farling or whatever, whatever you get your book printed. Um, and then if you wanted to make money, typically you would go to a publisher and they would buy the rights, the copyright to your work. They pay you for it and then they go print as many copies as they want. Right. Um, that, that hadn't really, I mean, you look at the Simon Schuster's of the world, the kind of the large publishing houses, they find someone call it 50 years ago. Uh, they had an interesting idea. Uh, they would, you know, with an interesting manuscript, uh, they would have someone pitch a manuscript. They would give the whole thing. And, you know, here's, here's a little bit of money for the manuscript with which they would then put up against book sales. So, um, the moment that, that your, your kind of your money was, was made up by the book sales, then you would start to get a percentage of the book as it sold. And, and they would help you go get it publicized and all that kind of stuff. Today, they do not do anything. Unless you already have a following, they are not going to publish your book. I promise. I promise. They'll, they'll take a chance here and there, but they're not going to mean, unless they have a sure thing, a, a hit, they're not going to publish you. It's just that easy. You know, the, the, the four work weeks of the world, you know, the, you know, are, are becoming rare and rare. But, but to be fair, he made that happen, not his publisher. Uh, and that's kind of the thing. And plus he had to write the manuscript and he had to kind of all those things that a lot of people aren't really good at. What we do is we develop that manuscript with you, that concept, you know, the, that cover, all the things that go along with the, you know, the, the lens with which you're actually, you know, the, the people you're trying to sell this to, you're trying to basically, you know, have put that trust in you. Whereas, you know, traditional is like, okay, where's your manuscript? We'll put it through an editor and you're done. Boom, boom. I hope you have a following. We will help you develop the following. We'll help you develop the book. We'll help you get it published. Well, we will publish it. Um, and that's, that's the biggest difference. And then there's, there's all these kind of ancillary things that we can kind of help you with, with PR and, you know, getting placements in, uh, in different magazines, you know, kind of the ink magazines or entrepreneur.com of the world, uh, uh, to kind of help promote you and that book. Whereas most publishers, they, no, you better have the following already. It sounds like, you know, someone like me, uh, if I'm trying to build a book, really, it doesn't make sense to go to the traditional publishing route at all because they're not even going to give me the time of day. So let's, you know, even if they do, that. let's pretend they do. Um, and then that you can't guarantee book sales, right? They're literally going to probably make you buy 10,000 books as part of that deal. Right. Which oh, basically man. nils out their costs. They may give you a couple of thousand bucks and then <laughs> they may give you a quarter of book. Once your once that money's paid back through their book sales, they'll give you a quarter of 50 cents a book. Hmm. Whereas in, in our world, we set the machine up. We will, we will, we'll, we'll develop the book, the manuscript, the book cover, uh, the audio book, however it is, you know, whatever, all the different ancillary kind of services, uh, we'll get it published in Amazon, Walmart, uh, Target, Books a Million, Barnes and Noble, and then we'll hand the keys back to you. You own hmm. everything. We're simply a oh, service really? provider. Yeah. We're a service provider. You, you own all everything. Um, whereas before you would kind of, <laughs> no one gets it right when they do it the first time. And it's, it's always pushed this day and the wrong day. And I didn't get any of this. I, we, we, we knew how to do all that, you know, and then when it's all said and done, like here are the keys to the Ferrari, um, you know, go forth and, and be awesome. And, you know, and then we'll kind of help support uh, the book sales and, and kind of uh, the PR, you know, once the thing goes live. When it actually comes to writing a book, right. You've written uh, two books at this point. Like, how are you thinking through, ideas how are you sourcing ideas to write about how do you know like uh you know i'll just bring my example right like i'm someone that has a lot of varied interests um and i i think i have a lot of um breadth not as much depth right and so uh like for someone like me how do you actually narrow down okay this is what i'm gonna write about this is what i'm gonna go super deep into or is it necessary to go super deep into it or can you have more general approach um, just how do you think through what to actually write about? I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I work from the goal backwards and I know that really kills the art of this and the natural art history that it, that it comes with creating something like this. I work from the goal and then move backwards. Um, it's kind of like SEO. You go see what the people are searching for first and then you go right, you go do your, your content. Um, if my goal is to get more business in consulting, my goal is to do more surgeries as a, as a plastic surgeon. If my goal is to, you know, uh, uh, is to, you know, get to the next, to the Baltimore Ravens or whatever. And I want to publish a book as a, someone who in football who wants to do that. Um, you have to have that goal first, then you work your way back. 
uh, if it's, you know, if it's, uh, if it's making, you know, uh, you know, if it's some kind of like maybe you're the CEO of a software a software service, like a SaaS product of some sort um, that leverages a Google Cloud, I'm sorry, Amazon Cloud, AWS, <laughs> right? Only AWS. Um, <laughs> you know, you kind of work your way back. You kind of, you know, here's why you should trust me. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. It's kind of that hero's journey, right? It's uh, the Iliad, the Odyssey, Homer's kind of journey through, you know, the hero's tale. Um, and, but you start with what the goal is. And if the goal is to get more business, the goal is to move your notoriety up, well, then that's what you're right about. And now, uh, some people will tell you not to give all the secrets away, right? If you're in a marketing company or, and you're going to write a book, you, don't, you know, some people would say, well, I don't want to give all my the, the secret sauce away in the book. Um, here's the thing. People are going to read this book uh, and they're going to think, wow, what a giant pain in the butt. <laughs> I think I'll just hire you <laughs> to go do it. This is an example of expertise. Um, you know, as people come in, uh, as we have our, our calls come in, the final kind of part of our sales process is we'll FedEx a book, you know, on, you know, how to build a brand with a book, you know, to our clients. Um, and then we'll send them one of these too. And I don't know if this is a video uh, podcast, but hopefully it is what we've done. We've sent in a, 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 a screen into a card and then we pitch, we pitch the actual book process, you know, with a copy of the actual book. Um, and this is how I, this is not my consulting company. This is how we would get our, our contracts is I would, I would FedEx these to CEOs of, you know, of, of larger organizations to go get that first meeting. And then I, you know, realized that the book is way easier to put the two together and, and go crush it. That's a, I mean, as an aside, I think that's a really good like branding point right there is uh, sending your book and that video pitch is yeah. something that I doubt 99% of other people are doing. So like a really good way to stick out in the mind of your, uh, you know, potential customers is to do that piece, right? Like, no, I mean, all the focus is on yes, like, but if I'm trying to get on CNN or Fox news or MSNBC, this, this, this video and that book, what a great way to send to the editor. What a, mm. what a, what a fantastic way to shoehorn your way as an expert into whatever it is you're trying to get on. Um, you know, the, the book is the, is simply the start you know, everything else is in how you do it and how you use it is really, the book is 15%. The rest mm -hmm. is all how you use it and how you leverage it. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, we, we probably send out 50 or 60 books a week. Right. Um, and, and that's how we get the, we said, look, here's an example of, of basically here's really our work, right? Here's an example of what we are, our work. And really here's an example of our, of, of what we do. More importantly, here's how we do it. Uh, and it just, it helps build that trust for the final set. Hmm. I love that. That was a, that's a, I think I'm going to steal that. Uh, once I oh, read sure. a book. <laughs> I'll bring you, I'll bring you there. There's a, uh, there's a couple different manufacturers in China that we deal that make these uh, for mm -hmm. us. And you probably get them for between 15 and 30, 15 to 30 bucks a piece wholesale. You'll have to buy a bazillion of them, but we did, <laughs> you know, but, and, and then now you kind of have these, these things that, you know, it's lithium ion battery. So when you FedEx it out, it's got to have lithium ion battery on the, mm -hmm. you know, on the actual outside of it. But, uh, it's a fantastic way to to jar someone into opening it up. Plus, they sign for it. So when I would so when I was at when I was at NASA, right? I wanted to work. I was at my dream job for sure. But you know, typically the 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 technology curve at NASA is about three to four years behind, and that's a death nail for a career if, you, if you're in the wrong technology. So I knew that I wanted to go work for Disney, right? I wanted to open a contract at Disney. So uh, what I did was I FedExed my resume to the uh, to the leadership at Disney, uh, to the actual you know IT directors and the managing hiring. But Lily, I, so Lily, I, I FedExed it to them. I could see that they signed for it. Right, I know they opened it. I'd follow up with an email and then a phone call. Boom, got my contract. Hmm. Um, it, it's kind of a sniper rifle, not a shotgun method, right? If, if you're depending upon someone to help you do something, where you could just take the the kind of the initiative in your own hands. This is a fantastic way. FedEx, mail, no one uses mail for marketing anymore. It used to be the primary source for marketing 20 years ago. And now would you get three pieces of mail today, right? What if you got a FedEx? You'd stand out. You'd completely stand out. And if you're, if you're, the thing you're selling is, 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 is costly enough. Um, what's 30 bucks to make, you know, tens of thousands of dollars? It's nothing. Right. No, that's a, a really good perspective. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about, the book writing process is like, I know you mentioned that, you know, 
figure out what people are searching, what you can actually, you know, work backwards and what you're actually trying to do. Now, I think one of the concerns uh, people may have when writing a book, uh, and I think I definitely fall in this category, is like, I don't really have anything new to say, right? Like, yes, I have a certain expertise and I've, you know, developed a craft or whatever, but like, I learned it all from all these other places and, uh, you know, what am I going to do putting it in a book? Why should I do it? So I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second. So if you were writing a book to go further your career, as an example, what would, what would be that, what would the, if you were just going to strictly write on the nuts and bolts of what it is that you do, what would it be about? Just, just generally speaking, we'll, we'll have to figure out exacts, but just generally speaking. Uh, like for, for my career, like, uh, yeah, you know, project management or is it, you know, yeah. space, what is it? Project management, operations, research, uh, modeling, stuff like that. Yeah. Operations research. What a great, what a, you know, it's a very niche kind of topic. There's probably 4,000 people in the world, right? Which is what you want. You don't want millions of people write a book for everybody, write a book for nobody. Right. But write mm -hmm. a book for, for people like you who have that, that one, you know, expertise in the area they're constantly wanting to learn on. Great. So, uh, so, so you would basically write a book that would kind of, would, that would kind of take all those other books and knowledge that you've gained and then put your bent on them, right? Put your, put your, your, your execution methods. What tools do you use? How do you use the tools? How do you string it together? What are the interpersonal relationships? All those things you have and you could absolutely write a book on for the other couple thousand people on the entire planet in your niche market. For sure. For sure you could write a book like that. Then you title it correctly. Uh, yeah, I, I like to go with fairly inflammatory titles uh, that kind of jar people. Uh, but there's got to be a way to, you know, it's something 101 or the basis of this. Or basically, it, would be, it could be a very drab title too. And now you're the author of that. You know, literally the, 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 your area of expertise, you've got a book published on it. Uh, there isn't a better way of getting on the stage. There isn't a better way of being interviewed. There's a better way of getting the next job, director position, C-level exec, than writing the book to begin with. Mm. Mm. That was a uh, motivated me to write a book. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know, there, there, and there's a couple of ways to go down that, that path. You know, it's, um, you know, if, if I'll send you a copy of my book and it'll kind of show you how to write the, that kind of, uh, uh, overview and then outline and then kind of drill into, you know, how the thesis of different chapters are on, they kind of run together. Um, it's a, it's a, it's something that can absolutely be learned, but it's, it's the problem is it takes a couple of tries to get right. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's where we, we typically come in, uh, you know, because you could go hire an editor, you could go hire a, 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 you know, a book cover creator, a graphic designer, but you're probably not going to get it right the first time. Just give me a call, though. I can definitely help you. No charge. I'll tell you. I'll, have, I'll walk you through the process if you need help. Um, you know, but it's a, uh, it's um, you know, it's a fantastic way to go uh, to go kind of uh, expand your notoriety and your expertise for sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really, really glad uh, you know ran into you and we got to meet each other. Definitely um, see the value in this, and uh, you know, for the audience that's listening, if you're in this space, definitely uh, highly recommend Scott as well. Uh, one thing I did want to have on my list of things to ask you is, you know, you transitioned from uh, a tech role uh, to publishing. And one of the things that I'm curious about is uh, e even your, your books, right? So like one of your books is more about like, uh, you know, getting the most out of, you know, those technical interviews and making sure that, you know, people aren't taking advantage of you. The other one is about like publishing and building your brand through your book. Um, how did you like, I mean, those are two different spaces and, and I want to just kind of understand from a personal branding standpoint, like how you're thinking through that. Was that a pivot you made or do you wear both hats right now? Or like, like just, I just want to get your thoughts on that whole, how you're thinking through your personal brand. There's a guy named, uh, Mark Maples Jr. Um, he is, uh, he has got a several billion dollar fund, Mike, I believe Mike Maples Jr. Um, and he defines a pivot as um, where you're literally just draw a line in the sand. It's the same audience, just a different product, right? So you're mm. pivoting around the same audience. You're just changing what you're selling them. This, and, and so I wouldn't classify this as a pivot. This was a completely different everything. I realized two years ago that I was sick to death of technology. 
I was very tired of getting paid 90 days after I completed work because that's just how Fortune Fives work. Um, I was tired, sick to death of $150,000 a month payroll. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it, is, uh, it is a lot of pressure, you know, when you're carrying this very large payroll and these companies pay 45, 90 days after the fact. So you're, you're carrying $400,000 before you get paid 100. So you're never ahead. It's, it's mm-hmm. just, it makes me unhappy. Um, I realized a couple of years ago, I wanted to have a servitized business, a business that was repeatable with a set of very specialized employees. Um, meaning that if you, if you do all the things, you're going to have to have 50 employees. But if you do one thing really, really well, you only need a handful of employees. You can pay them a little bit more. Uh, you can get the best as a result. And you can really be really good at this. And my... And that servitized business, what these, I figured out what these, were these books. It's the same process over and over again. It's something that I can, I can hire the best, the brightest for, pay them pretty good, pretty decent money, um, and, uh, and then put out a really good product. As opposed to having, oh, you do 50 things? Well, it's 50 people. Um, and that was kind of how I, I, I figured out it was, this, it, was, it was books, you know, about two years ago. Um, and then uh, I realized I hated technology. I was done with it. So that's kind of how I, I moved into uh, into the publishing. I saw the angle. I saw the value. I saw people's eyes light up when I pitched them on what we could do. Uh, and I, you know, this is this is probably my last. This this is what I'll be doing forever. I'm not doing anything else ever. This is this is it. I'm too happy. I, I, I get to meet badasses all day long. Four hours a day, I just talk to badasses like you, badasses <laughs> like founders, CEOs, inventors. It, it's the greatest job ever. And I hope you don't mind me asking, um, how old were you when you made this transition? Uh, okay, so uh, I'm 48, so 46. Wow. Oh, okay. So, 46. Yeah. So, like, I, the, the point I'm getting at is, like, it's, it's never too late to right. shift. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's the thing. So, and, and that's the thing is that when you think about it, I, I did pivot 10 years ago. I went from a uh, – from a uh, <laughs> From uh, I always call it I'm a very well I'm a technology prostitute right so I was just, I was just basically <laughs> prostituting my brain out you know for the highest bidder uh, you know and I did that for 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 a lot of Department of Defense and you know different subcontractors and Disney and Fortune 50 100 whatever um, and then I pivoted when I started my company 10 years ago it's the same mm-hmm. customer base just a different angle right you're you're going around it um, and I you know I was you know, it was my thirties when I did that. Um, but it took me a while to get enough experience for people to trust me to do that. And this is just the next evolution for the next thing. Um, yeah, I've owned several businesses, um, uh, along the way, you know, and I, I've had one, I've had un- one good exit, uh, about three or four years ago. Um, so we're just, we're just, we're just, we're doing the thing. I'm doing something I love, which is the marketing and the branding and, and just talking to, to amazing people. But yeah, no, there's never, I don't think there's ever an age that you could ever not do this. Why, I mean, why? Why would you? I mean, we're at the time of COVID. I mean, didn't we realize that what we were doing was holding our life away for, 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 for things we didn't necessarily love? I mean, COVID, I don't know if it taught about you, but it taught me that I want to be around my family more often. I did, I obviously, I knew that, but it, I never had the opportunity until we had to work from home. Hmm. So, yeah, pivot away. Go, go, change, go change careers. Why the heck not? One day we are all being, how old are you right now? I'm 25. You're 25. Okay. Statistically speaking, you're going to be dead in 50 years. That's a fact. There's no <laughs> ifs or buts about it. Statistically speaking, you will be dead in 50 years. Better get to work, man. Life is short. Hmm. Better get to work because there's a very high probability that you're not going to be here in 50 years. So TikTok, if that doesn't drive you from the morning to night, you're not paying attention. Hmm. Hmm. That's powerful. Uh, last thing I really wanted to pick your brain on here is, um, you know, you kind of touched on this when you talked about how, you, you know, your your story here and how you went from technology to Bright Ray to consulting to, um, you know, publishing. Um, but really, one thing that I'm trying to figure out in some of the projects I'm working on is, like, how do you actually get those first 100 customers, first thousand customers, like when you, uh, especially yeah. someone like you that is completely shifting, you're, you're not using that same audience, you're completely shifting 
you know, the industry you're in altogether. Like, how do you actually get those first thousand customers, first hundred customers? Um, and how do you get them to trust you? And, you know, where do you, how do you think through that? If you have any advice on that? So I, I do a couple of calls a month with entrepreneurs, um, you know, trying to kind of, kind of guide them. Right. And I just do it because I really enjoy, I, I enjoy all things business, all things angle, all things entrepreneurship. Um, and what I tell them is concentrate on the very first dollar. If the speed to that first dollar is so important and then $10. And then obviously the scale is different for every, every business. Maybe it's the first 150 bucks an hour and then it's the next 1500 bucks. And then, it's, you know, you got to get the very first dollar in, um, and, and, you know, Google, Google's, Google's whole deal is fail fast, right? And get it off the table if it's not going to work. <clears throat> fail as fast as you can. The moment you realize that dollar, that first dollar is really hard to get to, move on immediately, immediately. I mean, obviously, exhaust, you mean, okay, well, let me back up for a second. There are some things that, that need to be cultivated, need to be figured out, right? And, and if it was easy, everybody would do it, yada, yada, yada. But I'm also about trying to figure out if, if, you know, if you do, if you do fail on something, make sure it's final and move the heck on quickly to the next thing. But that first dollar, that first customer, um, you know, everything needs to be kind of measured. I kind of measure all things in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet or Google spreadsheet. Uh, you know, how, how, how expensive was it to get the first customer? Was it through handshake? Did I already know the person? Or do I have to go spend money to go find that person? And then just start adding zeros. As I add zeros to that budget, do the, do the customers scale that way? Now do I have to hire people? Well, how much does that cost? All those things, it's, it's a matter of getting the, that very first, that very 10th, that very hunt for the, the first 100 people you know, to pay you whatever that is. Um, that speed is, that velocity is super important. Because if it's not fast enough, you're going to be broke in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, one year. It, you, you have to make that, you have to pay the bills. You have to have a velocity of cash or you're, you're done. And Scott, where can people find you if they're uh, looking for you online? Um, your personal profiles, if you if you share them, and then also Bright Right, how can they get in touch for uh, book book publishing and that kind of piece? So, uh, so uh, with me, just look me up, Scott Terman, um, on Google or scottterman.com. For my company, Bright Ray, just go to b r i g h t r a y dot com, brightray dot com, um, and uh, you can find us all the you know all the socials from. I mean, we have a, we finally hired a full-time person that does nothing but worry about you know, social media. And it has been such a weight off my back. Not that I was awesome at it before because I wasn't. And that's the other thing. You've got to hire for expertise. Uh, uh, so, yeah. So, just look us up, Bright Ray, Bright Ray Publishing. Uh, and we are, we, are, we are in all the places. You'll find us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Scott. It's been a pleasure. It's nice meeting you. Now, as always, I have my key takeaways from this episode, but before we get into that, I want to share a clip from our discussion with Rocky Buckley on crafting your personal persona. There's a lot of experts out there and a lot of them generally teach the same things. Okay, so if you, you know, you want to learn a particular topic, there's a lot of people out there that may teach the same topic in almost the same way, but chances are you're the only one who would teach it in your way. And mm. only you are capable of reaching certain people. If you enjoyed this discussion with Scott, I am sure you'll also enjoy the episode with Rocky. Check it out wherever you're listening to this podcast. It is episode number 51. Now here are my key takeaways. Number one, if you're an expert or have some specialized knowledge, writing a book is a great way to build authority in your market and to build your personal brand. And number two, the book is simply the start. The rest is how you leverage the book. Scott gave multiple examples of getting creative with using direct mail to get his book and pitch into the hands of reporters and people he wanted to work with. And that is all for this episode. If you enjoyed this discussion, the easiest way to help out is to leave a review and share with a friend. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next episode.